Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of having to settle for mediocre are over. Welcome to Project Relationship. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. Join me as I explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. Doctor, that's Dr. Jolie Hamilton. Oh boy, today's the day, right? To say doctor, and it's also Dr. Biden. So, yeah. Yes, it is. And I'm here with very much not a doctor. Not a doctor. Ken Hamilton. (laughs) You know, the doctor thing doesn't really matter to me that much in some ways, but yeah, it took a while to earn, so. It should, it matters to me, it's big. It's the thing we do. You did a thing? Whatever. She did a thing. But we get some the misogynist title. dude <laughs> made a big show of things. Yeah. So I feel like saying something today. Okay. That said, here we are. We're talking about fighting yes. today. We're going to talk about fighting in the context of our relationships at the holidays. Okay. I have plenty to say about this subject. But most of what I have to say is yeah, it's the holidays. Time to fight. Time to fight. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. yeah. I was brought up in a household where fighting was not something to be um, held back. Fighting was actually one of the ways you showed that you loved someone. It took me a lot of, like many decades to figure out that that was not actually the only way to do it. And it took me one more additional decade spent with you to figure out that I could adapt my fighting style to be much more generative without actually setting the idea down that I had to like stop fighting, like that, that fighting was bad. I didn't have to swing all the way over to the other end of the pendulum. Yeah. That's, but- that, so that's that's a little bit about me and the holidays and fighting because there's a lot to fight about, right? Everything from the tree oh, decorations yeah. to the gift buying to the family ex- uh, explorations. To and all what the, all the complexes everything. I have around the holidays. <laughs> and and, and we already it. talked about the magic and the fights that can come out when one person wants the magic to happen when, yep, and is and the uh, other person's like, uh, that's me trying to make all that magic. Could you help? Could you help a little bit? But then I don't get the magic. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's, there's lots of, um, lots of little proto fights hanging around waiting to get poked. Yeah. Like little ornaments. Fights. Like little ornaments. On the tree of our relationship yeah. at the holidays. The little fighting advent calendar. Oh, what fight are we going to have today? <laughs> <laughs> that is way too accurate. Right, too accurate. I want to make that now. Can we make the fighting out of a calendar? I'll do that. To. Okay. Next year. Wait for it. It'll be great. How about you though? Because you and me, we, I mean, we've had a lot to work on we have. in this way, but we're very different. Oh my, yes. We are not. At, we don't come at fights or the idea of fighting or conflict in general from the same place at all. And the thing that I remember the most about our early days together was how utterly peaceful I thought you were and your family was and how, wow, they just never fight. And I really looked up to that. I I thought it was hashtag goals. I really did. I was like, wow, that is impressive. I don't know how you do that. I was a born fighter. I am a a double Leo. (laughs) born in the year of the dragons. I am all kinds of fire. I know that that's just my thing, but that's... a couple of years of hanging around with your not fighting mm. and I learned some important lessons. Not that there's a good or a bad thing about fighting so much, but that there's there was a hole there where the fighting might a... have that's been. That's it. It's it's not that it was what was missing because we weren't fighting. Maybe there are other ways to do it. Maybe there are other words to use other than fight. But we are individual people. We are not the same person. We didn't come with the same history. No. We're going to, at the very least, disagree. And we're going to bump up against each other's pain points. And now you've got a fight. Now you have... Or at least the potential. The potential for a fight. The potential for reactions. 
instead of responses and all those things that that lead you to a more um <laughs> vibrant and active discussion <laughs> in in some ways it was exactly that it was even the word fight yeah was not really allowed when i when i first was living with with you and your wife i like there there was no fighting and fighting yeah. was like persona non grata like oh, it, it really, was sort of its own so. entity yeah. and there wasn't supposed to be any and that was just yeah. really it was interesting to me but i didn't really know what to do with it I and, held still a lot at first yeah, because I didn't know what that was. Well, for meant. lots of good reasons. When I was growing up, my mom and dad fight, fought about the holidays, but they would fight about anything. Fighting was normal. Yeah. And it, it was scary when I was a kid. I don't want to underplay that. So it was scary. It was overwhelming. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. I know I was overly bold, <laughs> overly vibrant, you just said. Yeah. And I, I, I hollered way too much in my first marriage, and that definitely left some fingerprints on my kids. And I have seen the, the way, the experiences you had with fighting in your family of origin growing up left you with fighting being conflated with love for you. Yeah. So that's one of the, that's how you saw love happening. So it was one of the things that you did. And I want to be clear that I... I like the word fighting. That 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 works for me. It helped us figure something it, out. It absolutely did. And I the only reason I, I I hedged on the word before is the the concept of fighting, the word fighting. If it doesn't work for you, use a different word. It's it's fine. It's about the um the attitude of 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 allowing each other to be different. Mm. And of committing to work through it because that's, oh yeah, right. That's what was missing. In my first marriage, there were no fights because we didn't work through anything. Any of our conflicts, any of our disagreements. So we what didn't did work you do through with them, them we, instead? We shoved them down and we, <laughs> we just... I mean, I, I ask you that because every time we talk about this, I think, yeah. I don't actually get it. How did that feel? Like, what so, did you do with it, a disagreement? Uh, so what I did with a disagreement was internally fume. It would come out in other ways. Uh, you know, the whack-a-mole of the, emotions. Yep. You push them down and they, pop, and they up. pop up. And that's exactly what happened. And sometimes they popped up at home and sometimes they popped up other places. There's mm -hmm. a good reason that I was known to be an ass everywhere. Oh, yeah. You kind of I was reputation. so angry and frustrated with all the unsaid words, with all the unresolved fights. Because conflict, fight, whatever you want to call it. It wasn't getting resolved. They weren't getting resolved. So you just, I was just stuck. And then the frustration comes out. And I, let me tell you how liberating I find our stance of, um, of, of pro resolution. It's not pro fighting. Fighting is one avenue it's to one resolution. It's not the only way. It's not the only way. And sometimes it's the fastest you, way. There have been times, I remember the first time you noticed that what I was looking for was a fight mm -hmm. and it had nothing to do with um, resolution, actually. Yeah, that's and right. you called me out. Um, I don't remember whether it was the holidays or not. I just remember you saying, like, oh, I, think it was. I see you want to fight. And I was just like, I, I was like, I wanted to eat my own fist. <laughs> yeah. Um because I recognized in that moment that you were right, that I didn't actually want to resolve. I didn't want to be happy. I wanted to be right. And I wanted to be right during a fight. And I have a long history of that. And my father taught me that. One of the less pleasant gifts from a pretty interesting man, but um, that being right is better than happy. It's, it's not a good way to go. But it's been really hard for me to figure out how to how to how to push yeah and and not be aggressive like how to how to actually have my standpoint without being overly aggressive and you have had a hard time having a standpoint without oh, being so goodness. passive i have had such a that you're just you just fall over backwards yep and i can feel it just in the topic of fighting 
that my affect is up. I'm laughing more. I'm I'm emoting more yeah. because that's what was missing in in order to disconnect the fights from my relationship. I had to disconnect the affect, the the feeling. Of course, I couldn't disconnect it. I had to squish it, and as we said, it came up in other places. And there was more to it for me. Uh, the when I first experienced relationships with you and our first fight, no idea what it was about, but from that fight for years, every single fight felt like it was the end of the relationship because of, I remember that. Yeah. Because of my history, because of what I had connected to fighting in, in, my own self. Yeah, you'd look it had was to this panic. Terrifying panic. It's absolute panic. Face. Which, by the way, it's really hard to fight when you're panicking. Um, or it's really hard to resolve anything when you're panicking. I was so scared. Like the fight didn't matter. That was something that I struggled with. We would, so I would be fighting and a bit tooth and nail. And you would try to like give me whatever it was I wanted. I didn't want that. What I wanted was for you to step up toe to toe with me. And yeah. I knew yeah. you as, as a child, I knew you or I, I knew who I thought you were. Right. And that was supposed to be this big, tough guy yeah. who was, um, intelligent and, um, argumentative and a bulwark, right? Like you right. were, you were, you were strong in your opinion as well as your body. And I expected that. And then when I was in closer relationship with you, it turned out you were kind of a wuss. Completely. I didn't know. I was shocked. So I was really like, I was so um, off kilter because I didn't get that that push. I didn't, I didn't feel you step up to meet me in the in the debates. Yeah. Forget and the dis disagreements. The debates. The debates. Even. Yeah. I I felt you try to give me what I wanted, but what I wanted was the, I wanted the fencing. Yes. I wanted the back and forth. And here's a uh, part of how I experienced the arc of our relationship as it relates to fighting so far. So you have a comment um, in your book at the end of this chapter. Chapter nine, yeah. Um, learning to fight with respect means fighting for our love instead of against each other. Yeah, for our love. For our love and respect yeah. is key. It's, and it's not just, okay, don't be mean to each other. Which that was, I needed that lesson. You did need that lesson. My my use of the ad hominem attack was a little over the top, yep. to say the least. I don't even have a way to apologize. Everybody out there, if I attacked you personally during an argument, I'm sorry. I know I was wrong. <laughs> it took such a long time to learn that. But mm -hmm. yeah, the disrespect from you was coming in a different direction. It was. And it was cloaked. It was much more mysterious it, to me. And what I felt was that I wasn't behaving in a way that allowed you to respect me. Like mm. I, I didn't feel, I can't think of what the it was word kind of is a childish for that. It was a very childish. Stance. Well, so what did you say? You said you wanted me to stand toe to toe with you. If I wasn't standing toe to toe with you, where was I? I was curled up on the floor, terrified. You know, that's not helpful. And the holidays magnify these things, particularly for me, because Youngest child, holiday time, feel kind of childish already. And now if there's a fight, okay, now I'm like doubly childish. And now there's no way to resolve what that. What did you because think I'm was going to happen? When the we world was argue. going to end. You were going to withdraw your love forever. That's what it felt like. Like that was it. You were not going to bother spending any more time on me, time or energy on me. And that's what it felt like. Which and, is shocking to me. I, I have this. Well, look, it has. We should be on video right now because yeah. I have this look of like I don't get it because I had given up. It has everything. nothing like, to do with. I had thrown your... my whole life yep. into the wood chipper. That's my metaphor for it always, and people yep. get that. I had taken everything and I just. No. Right, because I wanted a life with you. I didn't yeah. know what I wanted that to look like. We tried a whole lot of things that worked to varying degrees. But I wanted a life that included you in it. And on our on my worst day, that's still always true. On our worst day, that's still been true. Yeah. 
But yeah, you would panic at even like a disagreement over what to have for dinner. Yeah, well, completely. And I thought the reason I could still panic despite all of that, despite everything that you did, you did throw your life in the wood chipper to be with me. And I thought you were going to find out who I really was and that, and that you were, that you had made a huge mistake. Who did you think you really were? Well, the, the mushy nothing compared to the strong bulwark. I wanted to be the strong bulwark. And the thing is, and this is my experience, and this is one of the reasons that I love the fighting so much is that I learned how to stand there. I didn't learn that I had to fight specifically, but what I learned is I could stand there in it. My point yeah. of view, okay, I could yeah. stand in my point of view and have it not be yours and you wouldn't hate me for it. Yeah. Which is actually all I really wanted. Uh -huh. I wanted to know you. Yeah. And I would push you and needle you and press mm -hmm. because I wanted to know what made you, you. And my self-esteem was And really I wasn't always nice weak. about it. And I would push and poke yeah. and poke and prod. And I had ideas. Like I had ideas about yes. what I wanted to have happen. Yeah. And so I would push you to like, okay, so cool. So either make this happen with me or come up or with an idea, idea, have an idea. Yeah. And instead you, you would have this, that very watery quality of like, just yep. flow with it, except. Flow with well, it means making nothing in happen. Our, in our very complicated and, to do and busy family that didn't, it just didn't get the job done. Maybe it could in a different life, maybe if we'd had a different life, but I'm thinking there were some times when a fight turned into something really generative though. I mean, that happens actually more and more. More and um, more. We had an argument yeah. yesterday morning. You said something hurtful. Um, it didn't need to be a big deal. You you just, you accidentally bruised my feelings. I have a soft spot in an area right now. Um, I have a, a long-term injury, so I can't work out the way I want to. And mm -hmm. you just banged up against it. I just it. banged up against it. And it was it just clumsiness. It wasn't, you didn't mean to hurt me. But we had an argument about it in a pretty safe, contained way. Yeah. And the argument let the energy, what I felt was the energy rise up and then have some place to go. Like it rose Great. up and then it could just sort of be out in the world. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Acknowledging it, just letting us. it be and letting it be part of, of who we you are. You hurt me together. and it was an accident. Yeah. That's all. And, and, I, and I used to crumble at that from a, oh, I feel so horrible. Somebody make me feel better. Yeah. Oh, if I who's said, around? Oh, you. I hurt you. I feel bad. Make me feel better. <laughs> oh, and that, let me tell you, I have seen that's been at hard. one at some point or another, all of our children do that. It's a thing we do. We people. We people. And if, say more about that. Yeah. Because so, that is a thing. Um, it's been a hard lesson to teach each of them. Uh, I mean, yep. they're older now and they, they do a much better job of it. But I mean, they were little. Yeah. And yeah. So, so you see a kid, um, whack another kid in, in whatever way. Either they like meant they, to, or they didn't they mean meant to, or, or they whatever. didn't mean to. And now, and now the, the person that got hit is crying. And now the other person, the person who, who caused the problem now feels bad and is looking for comfort. Right. Cause it's a, a hit to their self-esteem. Yeah. I mean, um, they have to recognize, this is where I think recognizing that we contain whatever you want to call it, that we can contain the the less desirable parts of ourselves. Yeah. Whether you want to, you know, talk about it from complex theory or parts work or whatever. There are a million different ways we can talk about this, but being able to own the fact that you aren't all good. You're not you're not perfection no. personified. In fact, you're not. you're complicated, you're messy. You not only make mistakes, but sometimes you're hurtful, sometimes you cause harm. You're right. harmed, sometimes you cause harm. And that that doesn't mean you are you're bad. You can be flawed without being bad. I hadn't right? really felt... And the kids ha had struggles yeah. with that, but so did you. Oh, come oh, like, I really all did. the time. Every single time we had a place where you had bumped up against me, you would request non-verbally oh, request yeah, because... that I help you feel better about yep. it. And some uh, a technique that has helped me a lot, and I don't think I s have seen the connection between this and what you were saying about the, the parts, 
Um, so yeah, we're, we're good and bad adults, children. We have, we have, you know, completely self-centered, don't care about anybody, just want what I want parts. And we have very, um, generous parts and they're all in there together. We're, we're wandering around like that. What helped me a lot was remembering that I could feel more than one thing at a time. So I, so I hurt you. I feel horribly bad, but I also feel empathy for you. And I could get overwhelmed by my feelings about myself and demand help from somebody or request or, you know, cajole or whatever. Or I can say, yes, I do feel bad and then feel my responsibility for it and realize that the empathy I feel is more important in this moment. Yeah, I don't the moment. in the moment. That's I don't have thing. to forget that I felt bad. I don't have to push it down, but it's not the thing to deal with in this moment. That's it. The I'll sequencing of things there yeah. that has come up a bunch in larger family pictures too. Sometimes I feel like, um, sometimes I feel like it, it gets missed that there can be a moment like, oh yeah, you know what? This is just this is a big out right now. Um, you know, when, uh, when someone is, is grieving or when they are going through a big transition or change, yeah, their feelings may be more tender. And Mm -hmm. if the relationship as a whole has, is a good enough, like solid enough container, then that can take priority for the time. And you can remember that your needs don't have to be ignored. You don't have to smush them. Um, and it's okay. It's more than okay. It's, I welcome the opportunity to have you bring up on some random Saturday. You know what? I've got some ouches that I'd like to talk about and we just talk about them. I mean, that's, I think that's one of the things our morning walks are really good for. They are. I've been getting up and going for a four mile walk in the morning and it's, it's, you know, early it's pre 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 dawn dawn now. A lot of times. And Sometimes it's just those random things that have collected in the background yep. that can get brought up. And sometimes that causes a little a little spike that looks like a fight, but it's not a fight. It's more like a little remembrance of, oh, that was an ouch. And then yep. an acknowledgement, some space for the feelings to just exist. Yeah. And there is something about walking in the dark and the pre-dawn and then the sun's rising that yeah. makes that process pretty fun, actually. It is it, not always in the moment. No, but, but more or less. Um, I find it exciting to live a life where I can share with you all of the feelings that I have, including the ones that say, ouch. Oh, and by the way, I'm not sure that I completely approve of feeling this ouch. <laughs> Yeah, you but have your ouch own judgment. anyway. Yeah, I have okay. my own judgment of it. I mean, I'm not saying every time, but the times when I feel like, geez, this feels like a really selfish ouch I've got right now. And sometimes it's like, nope, that's an ouch. But even that we can talk about. Yeah. And we acknowledge each other as 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 full people with all the complexities. And man, it was a level of emotional engagement I was completely unprepared for when we started our relationship. And that and took years and years and years. I mean, years. that's just the last couple of years that yep. we've been able to recognize the, the ouches with grace in the yep. moment. And there was a time. Our, our particular ways of coming to arguing and not arguing, yeah. <laughs> but feeling the things were so far apart they were so different yeah that anything could put us off the same page we weren't on the same page anymore and yeah any little thing could set us off in that direction and i'm thinking about the holidays right now and just thinking about what's about to happen so we've got you know here we are halfway through december and so just a little while longer and, and it's 2020 and we're wrapping up this weird year, but it's not like things are just going to magically, we're going to snap our fingers nope. and something's going to happen on January 1st and all of the troubles of 2020 are going away. That's not how it's going to be. And that's right now, my primary source of tenderness is 
yeah, there's so much out because it's so ouchy yeah. right now. Yep. A lot of awesome stuff has happened for me in 2020. I've I've had a hell of a year. Lucky me. And it's been filled with oof. And there's just there's so much capacity for running up against each other's sore spots. Yeah. And that wakes up that tendency that both of us have that was hard to notice, but I, I wrote about it because it came, we started noticing it, that we have those those sore spots and we'll actually poke them on purpose when we're hurting. Yeah. We'll poke our own or poke each other's yep. sore spots so that we can have kind of a familiar fight. Yep. It's like, it's like a weird, it's a perverse way to connect. I think yeah. John Gottman talks about the, the sticky fights um, too. And it's, you know, you'll have this like this pattern, this fighting pattern that just stays with you. But I notice that I will do that. I will provoke a small argument because I would rather feel that out than to feel alone. Yes, exactly. But I'm, and that's not exactly how I want my life to be either. Right? So how do I figure out how to move past that that one tool that says, well, arguing would be connection right. and move into other kinds of connection? And that's not been easy. And I don't, I mean, I, I'm thinking right now, yep. what do I do tomorrow yeah. when we take on yet another big project? This weekend, we emptied my childhood home. Um, <laughs> starting tomorrow, we're emptying out a whole bunch of the stuff that I stored from emptying out my grandmother's it's it's yeah. there's so much going on how do we not do that again what i have found <laughs> so a good game for me is should have said i love should have said pam victor thank you pam for victor should've, should've thank said. you um it can be very very funny but it can also be extremely helpful because what i have found is yes after years of working on our fights and our our resolutions um, nothing beats a good do-over. Nothing beats a good do-over. And, so, the, and so should have said it's just an improv game where somebody makes a statement and then you just say should have said and they have to change the statement and say it again. And then you say should have said and they have to change the statement and restate it. And it, it gets funnier and funnier each time you say it. But this is a do-over where you just literally say should have said. Should have said. And um, fights can sometimes be bids for attention. Yeah. And I have done some things. I have poked you and you have, I mean, you're you're very smart. You're very good at these things. Um, and you have said, look, you, I, this is, I don't want to spend this time on you. I don't want to give you this attention right now. And over the years, I have slowly figured out that sometimes I'm just looking for attention. And so I'm trying to say, should have said, I just want your attention. Which as is a whole fast different, as I can. That's a different and, request. And right? eventually I'll get to it before I start the fight. Yeah. Because that, and that's my experience. Make the request Make the request as a, just a direct request for Rather attention. Rather than the toddler-like <laughs> yeah. tantrum yeah. that is also often a bit yeah. for attention. And I don't say that to insult you. I mean, I do it too. Oh, no. That's... Um, we all have that inner toddler that wants attention. So as we head into... Um, an intense time, we can then, okay, I, I'm going to challenge myself to find at least one time a day when whatever I'm doing is actually a bid for attention, whatever it is, no, whether I'm asking for it or it, not, like, it. I'm just yep. going to look for it. Like, yeah, what am I, what am I doing? Idea. That's actually, cause sometimes I even wonder about my physical symptoms. You know, do I, do mm -hmm. I get a headache because I actually want attention? Do I get, um, do I get, you know, that, that all the soreness and pain that I get my, you know, somaticization, the, the feeling of body sensations, the body mind connection is very strong. Yes, it, it is. It definitely could be happening and uh, start noticing. I'm just going to bring some attention to yeah. it. And I, I have such a long history of, of implicit communication of not saying things and then trying to evoke a response. So starting a fight to get attention is mm right in line with everything that I've learned. And also I have a little trouble taking responsibility for myself. So if I were to come to you and say, yeah. I want your attention, you would say, but I'm busy. Now I have to acknowledge that, but that's what I want. Okay. So. Well, that's what I can give you for Christmas. Attention? Yeah. Great, love it. <laughs> okay, so 
You figure out what kind of attention you want. Yep. And we'll talk about that again. Yeah. I'm going to notice when I'm tricking, tricking yep. you into attention. And all of this in the context of how do we love each other better? That's oh, the goal. Yeah. Okay. And you all, how do you love each other better? I love that question. Yeah. Okay. Till next time. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton and Ken Hamilton. If you've been enjoying season one, we would totally love it if you would drop a rating and a review to help more people find us. In episode nine, Ken and I talked about how we navigate the messiness of fighting without totally destroying our connection. We talked about how, well, I talked about how it felt to come at my partner with aggression when I actually wanted to just know him better. And Ken shared how he struggled to find his footing in any fight because every single time it felt like the whole world was ending. We decided together to spend the next few weeks noticing when we're poking each other in our sore spots when we really want attention. And we're going to try to figure out how to love each other just a little bit better every day. So join us next time when we turn our attention to business. Because in fact, I wrote this book about entrepreneurship and love. I'm an entrepreneur heart and soul. Ken is very much not. And business is yeasty. It can swell up and fill every single space. So how do we set boundaries and encourage each other to follow our specific dreams and still have some space for stuff that isn't business related? We'll have to figure it out when we talk about it. <laughs> Until then, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news. 